Welcome to June's Lead Code Challenge. Today's problem is unique binary search trees. Given n, some number, how many structurally unique binary search trees are there that store values 1 through n? For example, if we're given the number 3, that means there's going to be 3 nodes, 1, 2, 3. How many unique binary search trees are there? And they've drawn this out where we'll see that we can have 1 at the root and 3, 2, coming down here, another one at the root, and two, three like this, three at the root, and so on and so forth. And there's going to be a total of five. And just out of curiosity, let's see how many there would be at four. Um, I'm just going to run a test case and check if there is some sort of mathematical equation we can figure out. So the expected answer would be 14. Um, and that doesn't seem to really have any pattern so far. So I'm going to go to the whiteboard and try to show you what my approach would be and gain some intuition to this. So let's start at the bottom and think about the most simple example. Say that we had just one number. How many bi unique binary search trees are there going to be? Clearly there's only going to be one, right? Where that one number is going to be the root. So that's simple enough. What about when there's two numbers? Well, if there's two numbers, we know that there's going to be two unique types, where one is going to be the root, and the rest has to be on the right side like this, or two is going to be the root, and the rest needs to be on the left side like that. So there's going to be two unique binary trees when there's two numbers. Now this is where it gets interesting. What if there's three numbers? Well, at one, where 1 is the root, we've already figured out how many unique binary trees there's going to be for 2 and 3, right? We know there's 2. So say that 1 is the root, well, either it's going to be 2 and 3 next, or it'll be 3 and 2 next. So there'd be 2, right? But what about for when 2 is the root? Well, when 2 is the root, there's only going to be one combination for this. 2 has to be the root, and the rest has to be 1 and 3. This is the only combination. So we can see something interesting happening here, where we know that at these two points, there's only going to be one unique binary search tree. And when we take one root and combine the two combinations, we see that it's going to be equal to whatever we take from here, whatever we bring from here. That's going to be the number of unique binary trees that we can have with two in the middle. So here, this is going to combine to equal one combination. So this is going to be one, one, equals one. And finally, when we take three at the root, we know it's going to be the same. There's going to be 2 here, and that's going to equal 2. So 2 plus 1 plus 2 is 5. There's going to be 5 unique binary search trees. Now we start thinking about, okay, we can start building this up, right? This is definitely some sort of divide and conquer solution where we can write something recursively because we can discover how many binary search trees there are when there's only uh, one numbers or two numbers. So in the same way, let's think about if there's four numbers. First we start at one. How many unique binary search trees were here? And we've already calculated that, right? There's going to be five, so that's great. What about here at two, three, four? Well, we know that there's going to be two here and there's one here. So what if you just multiply those two? There's two unique binary search trees when two is the root. And we could prove that out and you can draw that out. So clearly, when we're at the edges, we're going to use one as the root or like four as the root. We can write some sort of function to just say, hey, if we're out of bounds, just return a one. Okay, because that way we know whatever else we've calculated at this point, that's going to be how many 
trees are. Here, the same thing. Uh, when it's 2, 3, 4, and that's the root, it's going to be 2 as well. And finally, when 4 is the root, that's going to also equal 5. And that is going to equal 14. And you could see in our test case that's what it was. So hopefully that gives you the intuition of how we're going to solve this problem. So let's go and code this out. Now that we have our intuition for how we're going to solve this, let's start coding this out. The very first thing I'm going to do is write a helper method. And this is going to be my recursive function. You don't have to do this, but it helped me. So I'm going to write a helper method that passes in a start and end pointer, and first write our base case. Basically, if our start is out of bounds, if it's less than 1, or end is greater than n, then we could stop our loop and just return a 1. Or if our pointers have cross each other, so start is greater or equal to end, that means we can return 1, because either we're just pointing at the same node, so we only one number left, or we've reached out of bounds, so we should stop our loop. Now I'm going to initialize a counter, the number of counts that we want to count up, and do a for loop. And this will be in range of 1 to the n given to us, right? And actually that's going to be the end plus 1 here. And actually, just realized we're not going to start at 1. We're going to be starting at the start given to us. OK, so what do we do here? Well, let's add up our let's add to our counter. And we've already discussed the equation of how we're going to do this. We want to take however many unique binary search trees are on the left side and however many there are going to be on the right side with this number as the pointer, right? Uh, so helper method, what we want to pass is whatever we're starting at with i minus 1, because we don't want to be counting the number that we're at right now, um, because that's going to be like the root. And we also want to do this for our right side, and that's going to be i plus 1 to the end. OK, so now that's going to go through, recursively call into subproblems, give us the count, and just return to us at the end however many that we've calculated. So all we'll need to do now is just return our helper starting at 1, going to n. Oh, and my answer is 36. That's probably not right. Let's see what we've made a mistake. Uh, I, added, I added it. I'm supposed to multiply it there. OK, so 14. So this is great. This would work. But the problem is right now, it's going to reach a time limit exception because it's going to repeatedly call like lots of the same things. So in order to avoid that, let's uh, do some memoization. I'm going to create a memo here and say, all right, if we've seen this start and end inside of our memo, then just return what we've calculated inside there. Otherwise, then we'll run this whole thing. We'll save what we've counted up into our memo. Oops. Equals count, and then we'll return our count. So either way, we'll return something. But this is going to help us avoid making a lot of multiple calls. And let's just make sure that, like, say I do it for a 15. Uh, should be a really big number. And there we go. OK, so it doesn't reach a time limit exception. So let's submit that and ex accept it. So this is how I solved it. There is a dynamic programming solution, um, but it was really hard for me to wrap my head around that one. This is the one that um, I was able to solve. And to be honest, like I was surprised that this worked because I had some intuition. Um, I didn't fully grasp it, but when I submitted my solution, it worked. You know, So that was a good feeling because started to make me realize like, hmm, you know, all this um, repetitiveness and just solving these problems again and again has given me some insight into what sort of things might work. Because uh, as before, I would have like, had no idea where to even begin. So thank you. I hope that helps. And just continue coding.